Now is for the QC file editing. Okay, open that up with Notepad++. This is the template QC that I have included for you. What you're going to want to do is you are going to want to replace the your name, character name, and your model entries with those entries. So in this case, I'm Timbleweed, so I will name this Timbleweed, Destiny underscore Anna, and the actual model name itself will be Anna underscore player model dot model. So once this is done compiling our model using the QC file, uh, this is the final name of the model file. So what a QC file is, is it's essentially a text file that Crowbar will read, which is the other program that you downloaded. And it's essentially just a set of instructions for the computer. And it's telling the computer what we want it to do with all of our various pieces of model. Since our character has a face, and since we gave our character facial flexes, there is this entry right here, which has to do with all of that. So right here, you can name this the same thing as your model if you want. Uh, it can be whatever you want, though. It doesn't actually really matter. I always try to avoid spaces as much as possible, though, because computers typically don't like spaces. So I'll just name this Anna underscore player model. Sometimes it doesn't like it when you name things the same thing. And I don't know if that's affected in the same way or not. Models head dot SMD. So our, in our case, it's Anna underscore head. So Anna underscore head. And you're essentially pointing the computer at this file right here. And you're telling it that this is the face and the VTA file with the same name is the actual flexes that we made. So uh, Anna head SMD. And then you're telling it to attach the VTA, which is the flex, the flexes that we made. Uh, this is where you input the name of the VTA. So name that the name of your head VTA. So in this case, it's Anna head VTA, which I will copy the name of and just paste it. This name is so short that you don't really have to copy and paste, but if you wanna be sure that you don't accidentally typo it, then clicking on the file name, clicking rename, and then Control C to copy it and Control V to paste uh, is just a good way to make sure you don't accidentally typo something when you're working on the QC file. If you created all your flexes in the same order that is listed here, you don't have to do anything else for the VTA section of the QC file. But if you have less flexes than what I made, and if they're named differently, you need to change these accordingly. But if you have less than that, you're going to delete however many you don't have, and then rename the ones that you do to the names that you used within Blender for those flexes. So. Uh, you would just go to your head, you would go to shape keys, and you would just look at all of these um, flexes that you have made, type them in in the same order that they are here uh, within here, and make sure that each one is numbered in the correct order. So starting with the default flex being frame zero, it default flex does not have to be named basis. Uh, just leave it at default flex, even though that's not what it's called in Blender. Uh, it needs to stay that way for the source engine. In my case, I have created nine flexes. So I am going to undo the deletion and I am going to only delete enough that there are nine left like that. And I also did them in a little bit of a different order than I usually do because I put blink first. So we're going to put a space. We're gonna copy this one right here and we're gonna paste. We're gonna rename this to blink and we're going to change the other ones to reflect the change because now we have frame one frame one and then two three four five six seven eight nine and it needs to be in order so we're change this to two change this to three change this to four once you have all your flexes defined properly in the vta section like that now pretty much going to do the same thing for flex controller um, and then you're going to do the same thing for these. I'm going to delete all the flex controllers except for the ones that I did. And I'm going to name them 
appropriately. All right, so that's that. Okay, and now we get to body groups. This part is also optional. This is only if you uh, exported your model in separate pieces like we did here. You're gonna go down here and there's going to be body groups. This is where we are going to point the program at our separate pieces. First entry for body is already here, but it's pointing to a file just called body, which we don't have because our name is Anna underscore body. I copy that and we're going to change it like that. This is the body group name, and this is the name of the actual file. The actual body group name can be named anything. This is just the name that shows up in Gmod when you right click on a model and click body groups. And since this is her body and we don't want to have the ability to disable her whole body, just the command studio and then the name of the file. But here is an example of an actual toggleable bit, uh, which is the same thing, but after the command studio and the file name, there is another entry that just says blank. So by putting that below the first command, that enables you to be able to disable this specific body group in game. So um, we will name this belt, find her belt file name and change it here and there we go so now once we have her in the game you will be able to disable the belt so we're going to copy this entry and we're going to paste it again and we're going to make an entry for her cape now so we're going to change this to cape and then change the file name to cape smd do it again we're going to copy the body group entry and do it for all the rest of the pieces and there we go. So now we have toggleable body groups for all her extra bits except her head, which is defined up here. Do not make a body group segment or a body group entry for the head unless you don't have face posing because that's already defined up here. So it doesn't need to be pointed to again by a body group command. All right, right below that, there is the surface prop command, which just defines uh, how the game treats the character um, when it comes to things like impact particles. So like if you get shot, it's currently set to metal, which means that if this character gets shot, sparks will emit from it. So we're gonna change this to flesh because um, she's a human, not a robot. Uh, you can ignore these commands. You can ignore these commands for now. Um, and this right here is the next thing that you're going to pay attention to that is very, very important. This defines what folder the game is going to look in for the materials. So if you get this wrong, your character is going to be the infamous purple checkerboard missing texture. You need to set up what you want the name of the folder to be. So in this case, I want it to be models. The first part always has to be models. So keep that models and then change your name. Weebs. Character name materials, I'll just name this destiny underscore Anna. So it will look in the folder materials, models, Timbleweebs, destiny, Anna. Materials, which is the first folder, is assumed by the engine. So it's not listed here, but uh, I will show you how to make this actual folder once we're done uh, editing the QC file. Okay, so these two uh, entries you can ignore. And the next thing that we're gonna focus on is the jiggle bone entries. This is currently set for hair. These are settings that I use for hair typically. Um, so we are going to set these to the names of the bones that we made for her hair. So we're gonna go to pose mode and we're just going to click on the first hair bone and go to bone and it is called hair underscore front one. So we're gonna copy that and we're just gonna replace this bone name with that. There we go. And we're gonna do that for the rest of the hair bones until we run out. Okay, so those are the only hair bones we have on this model. There are a lot more hair bones that are listed here, but we don't have any more hair bones. So we're gonna actually turn those into the entries for our 
cape bones. So we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to name them uh, after the cape bones. So we're just going to go to the first one that we haven't changed yet, which is right here. And we're going to name it cape underscore 01 and so on until we run out again. But these are still using the settings for hair. So it's probably going to look weird. We could uh, compile it with these settings and it might turn out OK. But chances are it's going to look a little bit weird because these are the parameters that I typically use for hair, not for cloth. Um, OK, so in here is my settings for uh, the cape from my 801 model port, which I guess I'll include these uh, settings in a file somewhere in the template zip for you as well. Okay, so I'm back here and I'm going to go to the cape settings for the first cape bone and I'm just going to highlight it and control V to replace it with the cape settings. And since those are all of the physics or jiggle bones in our character, we can just select all the other ones that are here and delete them because we don't need them. Um, if you're someone who skipped through the jiggle bone segments and facial flexes segments to this part of the video, if you do not have facial flexes, you are going to need to erase this whole entire thing right here. Um, and you're just going to erase it and then you're going to copy one of the top body group entry here, uh, paste it, and then just name this to head um, and then point this at the uh, head SMD that you have exported. Because otherwise, if you leave it the way it is and just rename this part, but leave all the flex file stuff, it's going to get confused because if your character doesn't have a flex file, uh, it it won't compile. And if you also skipped the jiggle bones, you're going to want to just backspace all the jiggle bone settings from the QC as well, because the same thing will happen if you don't. OK, so the next thing that we're going to do is the define bones. So we are going to go to crowbar and then go to compile. And um, under output, we're going to change this to work folder. And then we're going to browse and we're going to go to our proportion trick compile folder that we just made output and then choose that. And now under QC input, make sure it's set to file and then click browse. And then we're going to go back to our proportion trick compile folder and choose PM compile QC. You can rename this uh, to whatever you want. And then under here, game that has the model compiler, we're going to set this to Gary's mod. Now you're going to check define bones and then you're going to click write QCI file. And now you're just going to click compile define bones. All right, there we go. And we can close this go back to our proportion trick compile folder and there will be a new file called define bones qci so open that up with notepad plus plus and here we have this gigantic list of bone names and their coordinates so we're just going to select all of it and copy them back to our main qc file and we're going to go to the section that says define bones go here going to erase it and then control v and there we go we have the defined bones setup. It's necessary for whatever reason. Next, you're going to want to go down here to uh, these. And as the instructions say, you're going to rename these to male if your character is male, or just leave it at as the way it is because it's all set to female right now. Um, so I'm going to leave it at female. But down here and in include model, it's all set to female as well. So you're also going to need to change all the Fs to Ms. You can just get rid of the Alex underscore animation inputs as well. The next um, thing that you're going to want to pay attention to are these two settings, which dictate as it says, high, ha how high the foot is off the ground. Right now it's set to 0 0.2. We're going to compile with this specific setting the way it is just to see if it works out. But sometimes uh, your character's feet might be going through the ground or they might be too high above the ground. And in that case, you have to come back here, adjust these numbers for each foot, and then recompile your model. You can leave everything else here the way it is, uh, including the ragdoll settings. Uh, under collision joints, there's these settings uh, with joint constraints that basically tell the game the max rotation settings for each 
bone. So in other words, how far a joint can bend or move in each direction until it stops. These are the default settings that I use for all of my models, but if you want more freedom with phys gun, physics gun posing, uh, you can actually make your own constraint, uh, your own joint constraints, and you can essentially make it so that each joint has unlimited rotation, which looks terrible, but I guess it's better for posing. But yeah, if you don't want to mess with that, you could just leave it at default, probably do like an extra segment later on that shows how to adjust those. Okay, so now that we're done editing our QC file, the next thing we have to do is the physics collision model. 